Hello coders! In the previous video in this tutorial, we created a splash screen for this escape room app. In this video, we will develop a room lock feature that will eventually allow the user to escape. First, go up to My Projects and choose Save Project As. In our last video, we created version 2, so we're going to rename this copy version 3, V3, and click OK. Again, it takes a moment for this to load in the top left-hand corner of MIT App Inventor. So at the end of the last video, we created this button that allows the splash screen to disappear or become non-visible. And that's going to allow us to show other components and stages or levels to this escape room app. So I'm going to simulate that here by clicking on the vertical arrangement splash screen component and then I'm going to click this visible property button so that it is unchecked and I do not see the splash screen. I'm gonna now create the room lock component or feature, which serves as kind of a scoreboard for our escape room app. To do so, on the left side of MIT App Inventor, I'm going to find the layout drawer. I'm gonna drag out a horizontal arrangement Last time we used a vertical arrangement, this time we're using a horizontal arrangement, and I'm going to drop that onto my user interface. I'm going to rename that component, shortening up the name here. Maybe I'll shorten this to horizontal, stopping at the Z, ARR underscore, and I'll call this room lock and click OK. Next, I'm going to adjust some of the properties for this horizontal arrangement on the right side of App Inventor. I'm going to change the height of this to 40 pixels, typing 40 and then clicking OK. It's now significantly shorter. I'm going to change the width to fill parent and click OK. It's now significantly wider. And I'm going to change the alignment, in this case, the align horizontal to center, as well as the align vertical to center. You're also welcome to change the background color, but I'm going to leave mine as the default. Next, I'm going to go to the left side of my App Inventor interface and look for the user interface drawer. I'm going to be adding three components from this drawer to this horizontal arrangement. The first one I'm going to drag out is a label and I'll drop that inside of my horizontal arrangement. Notice that it is possible to drop it below my arrangement, so just make sure you drop it inside the arrangement. Over on the component side of MIT App Inventor, I can see that it is indented and below that horizontal arrangement, so I know that I've hit my mark. I'm gonna rename this, carefully deleting the one. I'll add an underscore so that this component is labeled label count down and click OK. This is going to be a countdown timer for my escape room. Over on the right side of my screen, I'm going to adjust some component properties for the label countdown. I'm going to start with the font size, which I'll change to 24. Again, if you're using a smaller mobile device like a phone, you're going to want to use a smaller font but I'm using a larger mobile device. In this case, I'm using a tablet. I'm going to now change the text for that component over on the right side of App Inventor, and it's going to say time left colon space, and I'll just give this person 100 seconds to escape the room. That number is kind of arbitrary at this point, so it's up to you. Next, I'm going to go back to the left-hand side of my screen, and I'm going to be looking for another label. So now I'm going to drag out a second label and position this in the horizontal arrangement to the right of my first label, and I'll drop it there. I'm going to rename this component. This label is where I'm going to display a secret code to escape the room. So I'll rename this label underscore secret and click OK. Again, I'm going to change the font size, in this case to 24 points, 
and I'm going to change the text to secret colon space, and then I'm going to do four hashtags to show or to not show the four characters that will be the secret code. Uh, I think it might be nice to have a contrasting color there, so I'll change the text color to red. And maybe I'll change it to font bold. I like how that looks. Next, I'm going to add a text box. So over on the left side of my screen, I'm looking for the text box component. I'm going to drag that over and drop that to the right of my secret label within my horizontal arrangement. I'm going to rename that text box, carefully deleting the one. I'll add an underscore, and I'll call this text box underscore code, and click OK. This is where the user is going to type the secret code when they are attempting to escape the room. I probably don't need a text box that is that wide, so adjusting some properties on the right, I will adjust the width to 70 pixels. That should work well. And I'm going to adjust the font size to match my other fonts, 24 points. So these three components will act as kind of a scoreboard. Uh, when someone cracks the secret code and types the code into that text box, they will then need to press a button, and that button will check the code and see if they should escape or not. So on the left side of App Inventor, I'm going to drag out a button component and drop that on the right side of my text box. I'm going to rename this to button underscore escape. And click OK. I'm going to adjust the font size to 24. I'm going to adjust the text to escape in all caps with an exclamation point. I think I will change my background color of the button to green, nice and bright. And I will change the shape of that button to oval. So this completes the room lock feature on my user interface. Uh, but now I need to add some functionality. And so I'm going to now jump over to the blocks screen of MIT App Inventor. So what I would like to do is start by updating these two event handlers that we worked on during the last part of the tutorial. As you might recall, when somebody first loads the app, the splash screen is set to visible true. And then when they press the button on the splash screen to enter the escape room, the splash screen visible is set to false. I'm going to need some similar blocks here that will control the room lock feature on the user interface. On the left side of App Inventor, I'm going to find that horizontal arrangement room lock. Clicking on that drawer and looking down towards the bottom, I find once again a dark green set block that will allow me to set whether that component is visible or not. I'm going to drag that green block and drop that inside of my first event handler. And I'm going to go back to my logic drawer, and I'm going to grab a true. So my reasoning is when somebody clicks the Enter Room button on the splash screen, the splash screen will disappear. Its visibility will be false. But then the Room Lock feature will appear on the user interface. Its visible will be set to true. I do need to be mindful of how my app will appear when they first load the app, so I'm going to right-click that new green block, duplicate it, and drag over that copy to my screen one initialize event handler, because when the screen or the app is first loaded, I want the room lock feature to be invisible. Its visibility will be false. So, now I need to add some functionality to those components within the horizontal room lock feature. And I want to make sure that when somebody types in the correct secret code, they are able to escape the app. So on the left side of our screen here, I'm looking for that button escape. 
make sure we choose the right button because we have a couple buttons at this point in our development. When I click on that button escape, I'm going to find an event handler and I'll drop that here. I want this button to check to see whether they have entered the correct code to escape the room. So to check to see if I'm going to need an if block, I can find that in my control drawer. And in my control drawer, there are a few different options. I'm looking for the second option here. This will check if a condition is true and it has a then and an else socket. So dragging that down and inserting it into my event handler, I'm ready to start thinking about the conditions that will allow somebody to escape the room. To do so, I'm gonna to go to my text drawer and I'm gonna look for this compare text block. This is a great way to check a code, maybe a escape room code or a password code in an app. I'm gonna drag this over and plug this into the if part of my conditional statement. And here is a very important step. Notice that currently this is comparing texts by looking at whether they are less than, but here it's gonna be very important to make sure that your texts are equal. We wanna make sure they type in the secret code exactly equal to what it should be. That secret code is going to be coming from the text box. So over on the left-hand side here, I'm gonna click on my text box code drawer, and I'm gonna be scrolling down towards the bottom here to find this light green text box text block. So again, make sure you're choosing the light green text box text block. And we're gonna now click that into the first socket of our compare text segment. Next, I need to compare to whatever's in that text box to my secret code. And I'm gonna go back to the text drawer. I'm gonna to scroll to the top of the text drawer and look for this blank text block and plug that into this second socket. At this point, you can choose any secret code you want. I would encourage you to keep it short, maybe three or four characters. In my case, I'll be a little silly and I'll type a capital P I R and then the number eight. So that sounds a little bit like pirate or pirate and that should work well. So when that condition is true, when they type in the correct code into the text box and that code matches exactly equal to my pirate or pirate secret code, I have a then execution of what I want to happen as a result. Or if they type in the wrong case, I have an else condition. And so I'm going to set up some player functionality here. On the left-hand side, I'm going to scroll down and I'm looking for my player component. That was added during the first video in this tutorial. If you missed that, please go back to that video and just check the last couple minutes where the player is added to the user interface. But if you have your player here, we're going to click on the player and we're going to scroll down and we're looking for set player one source. This is a dark green set block and we're going to drag this over and plug this into the then socket of our if block. Next, we go to our text drawer and we scroll to the top. We look for a blank text block and plug that into the socket. The source for the player tells us what sound file to play. So if somebody has typed in the correct code, I'm gonna use the trumpet. And it looks like I should be careful with case here. Trumpet.mp3, I'm trying to match the uh, file name for that mp3 file that we downloaded during the first video. And if they type in the wrong code, I want it to play a different sound. So I'm going to right click on this green set block, duplicate, plug this into the socket, and change my source. If they type in the wrong secret code, I'm going to have my player play the alarm file. Way. 
finally, once I've set these two sources, my last step for this event handler is to go to my player drawer on the left-hand side, and I'm going to choose the player start block. I don't want to put this in the then or in the else. I want to put this below the if. So the reasoning here is if this condition is true, set the source to trumpet. Yay, we've escaped. Else, if their code was false, set the source to alarm. We have somebody trying to break out of the escape room and they haven't earned their freedom yet. And then finally, we call the player to play whatever sound file is appropriate. So this completes the functionality for this stage in the tutorial. You're going to want to now go to your connect here and either choose the AI companion or the emulator to test the functionality of your app and debug any issues that you might encounter.